Over the past 30 days, we've been in a bear market. As you can see here, the S&P 500 has dropped 9% over the past 30 days. Ironically, even though the market is dropping, we've actually pocketed over $19,000 during that same time frame by selling options. Here are some of the option trading techniques that we use to generate cash flow during a bear market. Here you see a covered call position we have in the real estate investment company, STOR. As you can see here, we own 900 shares of store. Those shares were assigned to us overnight on April 12th as a result of the nine cash secured put option contracts that we'd been selling. These shares were assigned to us at $32.50 per share, which unfortunately, as you can see here, was $2.84 or 8.7% higher than where store was currently trading at. One nice thing about the way that we trade is that before we find ourselves in a covered call position, we have already been collecting cash in that position. Here you see that although we didn't do many trades before those nine put options were assigned to us, we had actually collected over $1,200 in this position by the time that it was assigned to us. With stores showing some weakness, the next month's $32.5 covered call options, they weren't paying very much. So what do we do to improve our call spaces in this position? Line ourselves up to win, all while protecting ourselves from the possibility of store being called away from us at a lower price than what we had bought it at? Looking at the chart that morning, I noticed that store was trading below both the red 200 and green 50 moving averages. From my years of trading, I know that those moving averages, they tend to serve as support and resistance. On top of that, Store had recently made a lower low and appeared to be in the process of making a lower high. That meant that overall, this stock was in a downtrend on the daily chart. Because of that, I felt comfortable being a little more aggressive by selling an at-the-money covered call option. Here you see the trade alert that I sent out to my patrons later that morning turning those 900 shares of Store into a covered call. By selling the $30 strike price call options, we were able to pocket 70 cents per share. I believe that the odds of Store increasing in price way past that $30 strike price that it wasn't very high. In order to do that, we would have to push through a lot of resistance. And remember, this is a stock that was already showing weakness. Well, what happened? Let's fast forward three weeks. And as you can see here, where the point of the white arrow is, that was yesterday. As you can see, store continues to show weakness. In fact, down the volume section in the white rectangle, notice that the selling pressure has increased. Now, I still feel comfortable being in a long position in this company. I like the fundamentals, I like the real estate that they own, and I like their tenants. As a result of this new weakness at the yellow arrow, you can see that it has now broken below the previous wave's low. Because of that, I decided to roll this covered call option out and down to the third Friday of next month at the $27.5 strike price. For that, we were paid an additional $0.88 cents per share. Let me talk you through in a little more detail my thinking here. Here you see on the left, the daily chart, and on the right, the weekly chart, up to today. I did this trade yesterday. Notice where the white line is, that yesterday, store broke below that support. It corresponds to the yellow line on the right in the weekly chart. But even more important, notice what's going on in the white and yellow boxes in the volume sections. Notice that in both time frames, the sellers appear to be in control here. The down days and weeks are showing the most strength. Because of that, I felt comfortable rolling this cover call strike price out and down to right at the money. Now, I know some of you are probably asking, isn't that $27.5 strike price well below where you bought the stock at when it was assigned to you? So if it's caught away from you, you would show a loss on it? And the answer is yes. However, it would also be showing a profit on the options that we've been selling. In fact, as a result of selling put and call options, as you can see here at the bottom right corner in the red box, our current cost basis is $29.56 per share. So if this position were caught away from us at that $27.5 strike price, we'd be showing right at a $2 loss per share for this position. However, I plan to use our special abilities as option traders to do my best to prevent that from happening. But before we get to that, let me just point out that if we hadn't sold any options in it, if we had just bought store at $32.5 per share and then ended up selling it at $27.5 per share, that'd be a loss of $5 per share or an over 15% loss. This is one of many reasons why trading options is one of my absolute favorite ways to generate cash flow. But what are we going to do with store if it goes back up in price? We have just over a million dollars set aside for this main option trading account. As you know, I like to have at most 5% at risk in any one position. That means that in this store position, I'm comfortable having at most $50,000 at risk. If you do the math, 900 shares times 32.5 per share, that means that we currently own just over $29,000 of store stock. That also means we have almost $21,000 to play with. 
If store were to begin to go up and go past our $27.5 call option strike price, and it looks like the stock was going to be caught away from us, as an option trader, I could sell an additional 700 shares worth of store put options that generate some cash that would help me to roll those covered call option strike prices up as I roll them out in time. Now, I may not need that secret weapon. I may be able to roll the call options up and out for a credit all on their own, depending on how deep in the money the call option is. But if something were to happen, this position were to advance very fast, and I wasn't able to get it rolled up in time, I could use the cash flow from selling additional cash secure put options to roll that $27.5 strike price call option up as I roll it out. This is one of the main reasons why I like to do half position sizes when I'm trading in options. That extra 2.5%, it opens up a world of techniques for us to use when positions don't turn out the way that we wanted or planned them to. By the way, if that was really useful, what I just share with you, and I'd love it if you just give this video a like, just bump the like button. And if becoming a more profitable option stock trader is important to you, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and bell notification. Now let me share with you another technique that I use when our option positions go against us. In fact, I used it three times today. Here you see three option trades we did today in our main option trading account. These trades were in Facebook, otherwise known as Meta Platforms, WD40, and FedEx. Facebook is part of a poor man's cover call position that we're in. WD40 and FedEx are actually cash secured put options that have gone deep in the money on us. If we were only rolling these put options out, we'd be getting paid next to nothing because they're so deep in the money. However, as a veteran ops trader, I know that I can do better than that. I can actually turn these positions that have gone against us into cash flow machines while we wait for the underlying stocks to rebound in price. First, let's look at the poor man's cover call position in Facebook. Here's what the option position in Facebook looked like before the trade we did today. Notice that we were along the January of 2024 $200 leaps call option. That cost us right at $57.55 per share when we bought it. We have sold the June 17th 225 call option or paid $4.26 per share for that call option. That call option expires in 45 days. Now we waited to use our special bag of tricks on this position until after Facebook announced earnings as you can see here. Let me show you why I waited until after earnings. Here you see the daily chart of Facebook. At the base of the white arrow, that's April 27th, the day that Facebook announced earnings after the market closed. That day, the stock closed below 174. The next day, it gapped up to $206. Over the past several days, it's continued to steadily climb to where it's at today, $212.32. Notice though down the volume section at the white arrow that over the past several days, the volume has been slowly declining. That tells us that interest in buying Facebook has also been slowly declining. However, the volume is still higher than the average volume over the past month, so there's still some excitement in buying it. However, notice at the orange arrows that Facebook is now approaching the green 50 moving average. Notice that over the past several months, on the two other instances, when it approached this green 50 moving average, both times this moving average served as resistance for it. In fact, if I zoom out even further, you can see that since September of last year, or over the past seven and a half months, every time it approached that green 50 moving average, even if it was able to penetrate through it, it eventually served as resistance for it. That made me feel comfortable knowing that since Facebook is again approaching this green 50 moving average, odds are that it'll serve as resistance for it again. Remember, this is not a guarantee, but I firmly believe that we are putting the odds in our favor by trading with that knowledge. In fact, if you agree with me, press the thumbs up button. So what secret weapon do we pull out of our bag today with this knowledge? Here you see the trade alert that I sent out to my patrons as soon as we did this trade. In addition to the poor man's cover call position that we are in, we sold a bearish call credit spread by selling the June 17th 250 call option. And we protected it by buying the same expiration day, June 17th 325 call option. In all, we put a net of $1.95 per share into our pocket. Was this a good trade? Well, I don't know yet. You probably won't watch this video for several weeks until after I did this trade. So you have the ability of looking back in time. But I do firmly believe we have put the odds of winning this trade in our favor. But just in case I'm wrong, we have some nice bears that should give us protection and buy us some time to work on adjusting this position if need be. Let's start on the left chart, the daily chart. In order for Facebook to challenge our 250 short call option, over the next 45 days at the wide arrow, it will have to push through the green 50 moving average. At the purple line, it will then have to push through the resistance it found in early April. Looking over the weekly chart, notice that the orange downward sloping arrow it will have to break its existing downtrend on this chart, and finally, it will have to push through the red 200 moving average on this same chart. Can all that happen? Well, of course it can. But are the odds in our favor that it won't happen? I believe that they are. 
Now let me show you how we're doing consistent cash flow when a cash secure put option has gone against us. Right at five months ago, we sold the 250 cash secure put option in FedEx. On January 11th, FedEx looked to be setting up for a nice bullish trade. Here you see in the left chart, the daily chart, that it was in a nice uptrend. It was trading above the green 50 moving average and it recently solidly broke out above the red 200 moving average. It was doing its textbook retest of the green 50 moving average, so we expected that moving average to hold. In addition to that, over in the weekly chart, notice that it too was in an uptrend. It made a higher high and a higher low on that chart. It had also recently broke out above the green 50 moving average, which held us support for two weeks. Because of that, I felt comfortable selling the out of the money $250 cash secured put option. That gave us $5 for FedEx to come down and retest these moving averages and still get a 100% win with this position. Sometimes you make a solid trade, but things just don't work out. Several days later, FedEx broke below the green 50 moving average and has been trading below it pretty much ever since. Now, if we were just rolling this put option out in time, we wouldn't have collected very much cash at all in this position. However, that's not how we trade. When we have a position that's gone against us, we don't sit there twiddling our thumbs. We do something about it. In addition to rolling the put option out three times and collecting net credit each time, we've also been selling a bearish call credit spread against this position. We've been using the same techniques that I talked through in the Facebook position by using resistance to position our short call options, thus giving FedEx room to go up, but still allow us to win in the position. The result is that as you can see at the bottom right corner in the blue box, we have put almost $18 per share into our pocket. Now, that's not enough to turn this into a winning trade yet, but it's a whole lot better than if we had just rolled the put option out in time. In this video, I showed you three positions that have gone against us. In fact, they are three of our worst positions. On average, we have around 40 positions on at any one point in time, and many of them, they go our way. If you'd like to receive alerts when we do trades, consider the benefits of becoming a patron down at the link in the description below. The three techniques I mentioned in this video are only a few of the ones that we use to fix positions that have gone against us. If you'd like to step up your game and drastically increase the odds of turning your losing positions into winners, please check out the video series at the link above and in the description below entitled Option Repair Strategies. Until next time, happy investing and we'll see you again soon.